from Auckland, I head north to the Bay of Islands. There are about 150 islands off this aquatic playground and one of the most popular tours up here is to swim with dolphins. I've filmed human dolphin interaction in Ireland and it always amazes me that for creatures with large brains, they put up with us. I mean, we must really look pathetic flapping around en masse. The dolphins weren't too keen to hang around today, but apparently on certain days they will pick out individuals to play with, and particularly like swimming with pregnant women. Now supposedly the dolphin, along with humans and monkeys, are the only animals on this planet that make for pleasure. Um, they do a lot of it as well. Very short and sweet there in the dolphin world, no such thing as monogamous relationship. But um, you think with all this mating going along, there'll be a lot more baby dolphins than there are. But the female can actually control her ovulation, so she can decide when to release her eggs, basically determining when she wants to become pregnant. The Bay of Islands is also a renowned fishing location. One of the good things about the bay is, is there's always shelter. Even if they get a windy day, you're not going out through an entrance into a big wide ocean. You've always got islands and things you can uh, hide behind, even in the, in the worst sort of weather. So there's very few days you can't go fishing here. If you're looking for those big photo opportunities of big fish, I, I always push um, middle of November to middle of December. If you're looking for fun, Lots of very, very active fishing. Uh, it's around the March period when the carwai come in. We're in five metres of water quite often. Um, and we're getting snapper probably up to five kilos. And um, lots and lots and lots of carwai. And it's just, it's good fun. Pure fun. There were two things that I wanted to recommend that people do when they visit the Bay of Islands. One was to swim with the dolphins, a unique experience, and two was to visit the Waitangi Heritage Centre, where the treaty was signed between the Māori and the Europeans. I organised a film here yesterday. I've arrived today and I've been informed that they don't want me to film, uh, that they don't need the publicity, which is very, very disappointing. But there are other historical sites to visit. The Bay of Islands was the first place the English settled, and up the road at Kerry Kerry can be found the oldest stone building and the oldest wooden building, Camp House. I met up with a local Māori guy I'd previously met in Auckland. Tony Renata informed me that my troubles at Waitangi may be because the treaty is still a contentious issue with certain Māori tribes. Tony introduced me to a local elder, Papa Hei Hei, who explains the current situation. When the treaty was signed, they translated it into English and it changed the whole meaning of the thing. So that's what they went away and got the rest of the tribes to sign, the southern tribes. And uh, of course they've left Ngāpui to be the last big tribe in, within the, the process. And we're, we're all dealing with that part of the process right now. I met up with Tony at a local morai, which is a house of learning for the Māori. Tony explained to me the meaning behind two of the most visual of Māori traditions, tattoos and the nose-touching greeting. Māori tā moko, uh, especially um, uh, the ones that I have on me, uh, represent who I am, where I'm from and um, my culture uh, because, it's, because it's on me and that's who I choose you know, in, in my life to be. Uh, the Hongi is is who we are um, spiritually, and when two people touch noses, it's the drawing in of um, the the breath of the spirit, and and enhancing uh, our Māori, our life force. Um, generally, a sense of our spirits greet each other in that way, and and that's the the joining of the two, the the life before and the life after and the life now.